באנגלית. תוכניות שונות בעברית, שאני צריך לתרגם את זה אחר כך באנגלית. אוקיי, אז... Hello everyone, and welcome to the first meeting of uh, Massacre in Israel. Uh, I'll be showing or uh, talking about what Massacre is, what the project is about, what we're trying to do, uh, what have we, we've been doing for the last uh, few months, and where we want to be. And of course, the clicker <coughs> does not work. Alright, so I'll just say here the podium. Ideas or code or this 
design or what, whatever you do we can to help promote this. So I'll touch on, on some of the things that MasterCoin is and MasterCoin offers, but I, I can't cover everything in, in this lecture. Okay, so what is MasterCoin? It's a new layer uh, on top of Bitcoin that sort of uses Bitcoin as a backend. And, and for you that who know software, you know what backend means. If you don't know what the software is about, you don't necessarily know what it means. But it's a service that MasterCoin uses in order to do what it does. Okay? Uh, and it is not... No, I'll do it soon. Uh, the features that we are working on developing in MasterCoin is uh, we have some security features to make it easier and more secure to use the Bitcoin. We have exchange features like the descriptive exchange, which I'll touch uh, soon. And issuing. Uh, issuing new stocks or IPOs or tokens or uh, the different types of assets. And it's evolving really quick, really fast, uh, and it's uh, it's really hard to, to predict where we're going to be in a few months, and let alone a year. So this is just a preliminary. This is just a, a, a this is just a description of where we are right now. Mastercoin isn't just another alt currency. Okay, there are a lot of alt currencies out there. Each of them is trying to do something a bit different than Bitcoin. And uh, you may have heard the name Litecoin, uh, Peercoin. There are a few others. So Mastercoin isn't an alt currency. Uh, it's not a fork of Bitcoin. We didn't just take Bitcoin code and duplicate it uh, on the side, but rather we're building on top of Bitcoin. Uh, there is, by the way, another alt currency that also unfortunately has the name Mastercoin. Uh, we had the name first, we had published the paper in January 2012, they, they came out a year later maybe. Uh, so don't get confused between the two. Uh, Mastercoin isn't a particular feature or feature set. Uh, when Willet published his white paper and I gave a talk here in August uh, about what Mastercoin is, the talk looked uh, a lot different than what I'm showing you right now. Mastercoin is evolving, it's not just the features I'm going to talk about now. Uh, it's a new layer where we can add and implement an, a lot of new features as ideas come up. Uh, it's not a specific implementation. Okay, right now, Mastercoin works on top of the Bitcoin blockchain because that's the easiest thing for us to do, to get started, to get coding immediately, and we don't need to, to invent a new blockchain or to manage a new blockchain. Uh, uh, just we can use the, the same Bitcoin blockchain, the same Bitcoin servers that are running and securing the network. We use them for uh, our purposes. But if we need to in the future, we can always migrate to a different technology. And Mastercoin, Mastercoin is of course not a service provider. We're not a company. We're not owning the protocol. Uh, we're not providing any services here. We're just promoting and encouraging uh, other people to write code. And the code is always available, open source, and, and other, anyone use, can use this code to do what they want, but it's not going through us. And also for, for legal purposes, it's important to understand, we're not money transmitters, money facilitators, we're not doing anything here. Okay, so I, I, I will, will explain what, what are the concrete features first, uh, soon, but just so you know, if you wanted to use Mastercoin today, it's still a bit raw, okay? It's still a bit hard to use, uh, because as I said, uh, just a few months ago, there was just a white paper. Uh, people are working on, on the various clients and implementations, but it will take some time for this to get to a production level. Um, we have a few clients already that exist today, but uh, I think there's not uh, a Windows client right now. There's only one a client for uh, Mac OS and Ubuntu. And I, I personally haven't even tried, I, had, I haven't had the time to even try one of these clients. So I, I am using Mastercoin, I did some Mastercoin sense, and I did it with the Python script that, that is available here, but it's only for coders at this point. Hope that the situation will improve in, within a few months. Uh, and the second point here that I have is that the, in, Master, in Mastercoin, you will have one wallet that can hold Bitcoin, Mastercoin, US dollars, gold, uh, Google stocks, whatever you want. One coin, where one address, one wallet. Okay, so let me explain what I mean 
when I say a distributed exchange. Here we have Alice and Bob. Okay? Alice has 50 master points. That's not, maybe she invested in the original uh, Kickstarter, maybe she bought them another way, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Right now she has 50 master points, and Bob has 100 uh, bitcoins. Now Alice decides she wants to sell some master points. And she decides on the price of one, one master coin equals 0 0.5 bitcoin. It's a bit higher than the current price, uh, but uh, that's what she wants to sell at. So she takes 30 out of her 20, uh, out of her 50 uh, master coins, and she sends them out to the protocol. Okay, to, it, she doesn't send them to a specific party or service provider, but rather she locks in some of her funds in a way that she can't touch them right now, and but no, not, nobody else can touch them either. But they're basically open for anyone to come and bid or, or match her bid. Okay, she, this is basically, basically a bid that is locked. Everybody can see that Alice is offering 30 master coins for the price of uh, half a bitcoin, uh, half a bitcoin each. Now Bob sees this offer on the decentralized exchange. He decides to buy some master coins and he likes Alice's price. So he sends 10 bitcoins to Alice's address. Now the minute he sends these bitcoins to Alice's address, the minute this is verified by the blockchain, then the transaction happens. It is complete. Okay? The, what just happened is we had two parties exchange two different goods with each other, or two different assets, without there needs to be any trust, not in each other, not in a central party, nothing. So it's completely trustless distributed exchange. Uh, as you see, Alice still has 10 master coins that she wants to sell, right? Because she wanted to sell 30 master coins, and, and the, uh, the, uh, the deal was just for 20 master coins. She can now, if she wants, she can cancel the remaining of the deal, the remainder of the deal, right? Because she did one part of the exchange, now she can undo the rest. But she can't undo the, the transaction that already happened. So the master coins, the 20 master coins that Bob bought, are already, already in Bob's wallet. Okay. Are there any questions right now? Can I Okay. I understand how this happens with Bitcoin, but uh, how will you implement it with another client? Because uh, you can't see the transaction on the blockchain. Yes, yeah, so you can see all the MasterCoin transactions on the same blockchain. I won't get too technical right now, and I won't explain exactly how this happens, but each MasterCoin transaction and operation is recorded on the same blockchain. And everybody can just look at the blockchain and par parse it, and, and interpret it, and understand what's going on. I understand the master coin transfer, but how can you confirm the bitcoins were transferred if it was not nothing? If it wasn't bitcoins, if it was something that's not on the blockchain. No, but I, I'm just showing how bitcoins and master coins are exchanged. Ah, okay. 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 I'm just going to the user currencies feature right now. Okay, so we have this tree of, of assets. We have Bitcoin on the bottom. We have Mastercoin that is a layer on top of Bitcoin. And we have all these different assets from uh, currencies, dollar, euro, pounds, gold, metals, uh, Google stocks, or whatever else you might think of that we are implementing. And I'll show you soon how we're doing that. Uh, this, this is an example of how fast the protocol is changing because in August, when I gave this talk, uh, I didn't have the NASDAQ icon here. I just had the, the currency and the gold. But we didn't even talk about uh, any, any stocks. Okay, so back in August, in the version 1.0 of the protocol, there was some concept of back currencies that used an escrow fund to secure the, to, to secure the transaction and the value of these currencies. I won't get into that because we have tabled this concept for the moment, and we have found uh, what is a better solution to implement the same thing. And this is the contract for differences. And then I'll explain what it is. Contracts for difference, differences 
are a known financial concept that allow any parties, any two parties in the world, to, to do a contract between them and thus achieve a certain position on whatever asset they choose. Uh, for those of you who don't have a financial background, I just give a brief introduction, a brief explanation of what it, what it means to be long and short on, on an asset. If I am long on, on Bitcoin, uh, like I'm long on 100 Bitcoins, uh, this is equivalent to me owning 100 Bitcoins. I can own them physically, or someone can owe me these 100 Bitcoins, but my position has this plus 100 Bitcoins. And the other way around is if I want to be short on a set on an asset, then this actually means I have negative amount of that asset. Right? I, can, I can owe someone 100 Bitcoins, so I am short 100 Bitcoins. Okay, so how do, how do contracts for differences work? We have two parties, we have Alice and Bob. Each of them own a certain amount of master points. Uh, and each of them want to be long or short. Right? Alice wants to buy some gold, and uh, Bob wants to sell some gold. He wants to be short. Alright, so now we have any forex company uh, or any provider of information. I picked eToro here for just an example. Uh, they, can, they can publish a field of data, a field of information that uh, uh, says how much they value gold in MasterCoins or in whatever currency pair they want. They pick any, any uh, pair of, of uh, currencies or assets and they can say how much this in wor is worth in terms of that. So in this case, one gold, one gold bar, for example, is worth five MasterCoins, according to eToro. So Alice and Bob, they know eToro, they know it's a reputable company, and, and they trust it. Okay, they trust its its data field, and they trust it not to not to do any, not to make any mistakes on the data that it publishes. They send the money not to eToro, okay? Uh, eToro, they don't need to trust eToro to hold their funds, just to provide the information, but they send their money into the blockchain, okay? And and the money is locked in a contract between the, them. Once the contract uh, starts. No, none of them, neither Alice nor Bob, can change uh, and, and withdraw funds arbitrarily. All right? Now, instead of, uh, we have this pool, this joint pool of 200 master points. Both of them contributed some money. This money is managed together as a pool. The, 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 the transaction and the, the pool of money is secured by the blockchain, and this represents the price of gold. Right? The, the contract looks at what eToro publishes, and I think uh, I missed an animation here, uh, but uh, now we sort of decided that one uh, one master coin, sorry, one gold is worth ten master coin instead of five master coin. Okay, the price of gold in the real world increased. So, as we as we remember, Alice was long on gold, and Bob was short on gold. So when gold increases, when the value of gold increases increases, then Alice has to earn some money and Bob has to lose some money. Okay, because this is the contract that they took. So when, let's say, uh, one month has passed since they started the contract, and, and when they signed the contract, they chose, they both of them chose, one month as the period of the contract. So after one month passes, they look up, or uh, everybody, the blockchain looks up the latest price of gold, that as published by eToro. <coughs> and then the blockchain decides who gets what amount of this 200, uh, of this pool of 200 master questions. Now, Alice, she was long on gold, right? She betted, she, she thought that gold is going to increase. So did she, if, because she was right and gold did increase, she gets a larger, a larger stake in the joint pool. And Bob loses some of his money, right? Because he, 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 he it was short on uh, gold. Alright, so this uh, this is done, and each of them gets get their money back. Um, and then the, the result was equivalent to them buying an actual physical bar of gold in the real world. Okay, but the financial result was the same. And note that they didn't have to trust anyone in order to, to tie their assets, to take a position on gold. Alright, so now, just a second, now we have uh, 
we have this contract between two parties. Uh, now the, the, the question is, how can, how can we make sure that there is always a counterparty? Right? If I want to be long on gold, if I want to buy gold, how do I know that I always find someone to take the other position, to be short? Right? So the, what it turns out that there is a market for this kind of uh, bids and asks. People can post bids and asks for various prices. They can hedge their position via external markets. And what do I mean? Uh, let's say I have an account, a, a Forex company, right? I can go to that brokerage account, that Forex account. I can enter a long position on that uh, market, on that account, on that, on that exchange. Simultaneously, I can enter into the opposite position on the massive coin protocol. And thus, uh, total, my position hasn't changed, right? If I buy gold with this hand and I sell gold with this hand, I, I, I'm not incurring any additional risk here. Uh, now, why, why, why would I even do that? I, can, I don't have to use the same price. I can increase the, the, the price of gold in which I sell on the, on the master coin blockchain. So I can make a profit margin here. If, if I find uh, someone willing to take my position on a master coin, then as soon as that order fills, I, I counted, I, I copied that order, or the opposite of that order, to the real world, neutralize my position, but I get some, some commission for my efforts. And so it's basically risk-free risk money that I can make, and everybody can make, by, by playing in this market. So the, a lot of people in the world has a lot of incentive to, to do this kind of uh, job. People who are already forex traders, they already have accounts in all the, all the exchanges, and they can uh, eliminate this arbitrage. And they can make money and then thus decrease the cost for the end user. So the, the normal user who just who doesn't have an account at any brokerage firm, he just wants to buy or sell gold. He can always find a counterparty, probably at a cheaper price, because we have one unified uh, stock exchange or a forex exchange that everybody can access. And we have competition between the different people offering the bids and asks on this exchange. All right, another chance for questions. Can you get the microphone there? <coughs> I'm wondering about the, these uh, transactions. What about the regulation? Are those uh, legal? Are they regulated? Should yeah. They so that's a, an excellent question. Uh, the thing is, it's important to separate the person doing the transaction the, uh, from the master point blockchain or or service or foundation. As I said before, master the master point foundation and everybody working on it is just writing software. Right, or, or promoting it in, in, in some way, but we're not providing a service. So it's all open source software, anybody can use it. Uh, we don't have any regulatory issues with that personally. Now, as an individual using this, you still need to understand what is the, the regulation in your country. Right? If you, you, know, you, you live in Israel, and then you may want to be anonymous, you may choose not to be anonymous, that's up to you to decide. We're not getting into that right now. Ophir, you had a question? Yeah. Um, Elian Tzach uh, from Bitco asks, uh, please explain how technically the transactions work. Uh, what does it mean, a protocol on top of Bitcoin? And he has another question to follow up. Yeah, so I'm not going to get into that in this talk. It's not a technical talk. It's just status of, of what can we do with it. OK, so the second question is, What's the point of having uh, master coins? Uh, why create another coin and not just trade on the protocol whatever you want, gold, silver, etc.? Yeah, so we haven't found a way yet uh, to, to do that without the conception of master coin. I mean, this is one proposal, one project that implements the decentralized exchange. There are other types of, uh, there are other projects out there trying to do the same. We have the, the Ripple, Ripple Labs project that also has an, a decentralized exchange, they're doing it in the form of IOUs, right? So, so to do a decentralized exchange on Ripple, you always have to trust someone to physically hold your money, right? And this is, this is different from what the approach we're taking. Also, there is the, the, the Colon Coin project, which uh, I, I won't go into details right now, but also with Colon Coins, there is an issuer of Colon Coins, and you have to trust the issuer to retain their money. 
Okay. In the back. Just continuing this question. How about contracts? Um, the protocol that my can produce, and what way is it easy? Because you can basically do many of the features that, that you just mentioned. Right. And from the protocol pick. Yeah, so there is uh, a feature in Bitcoin that's called contracts, right? It's, it's an old feature and it's, it's, it has existed for several years. Oh, okay. So I, I repeat for the audience, uh, the question was about what about Bitcoin contracts, right? Why, why not just use them? So Bitcoin contracts have been in the Bitcoin protocol for a long time. But the applicability of how to actually use it in, in you know, I have a Bitcoin client. No Bitcoin client has implemented contracts. It's it's not such an easy problem how to how to do this uh, synchronization. Now, in Mastercoin, Willet chose not to use specifically this feature. He wanted to use just the basic basic Bitcoin operations to make sure that it's as simple as possible and, and that the transactions are propagated throughout all the nodes because maybe some nodes don't work well with that. We don't want to be to pilot. The, the Bitcoin contract, because it's an experimental Bitcoin feature. Uh, we use a different technical approach to implement that, and because we just build on top of Bitcoin, I won't get into the details, but because we just build on top of Bitcoin, we use Bitcoin as a security provider and as a timestamp synchronization service or service. So we just have a few messages. Every type of Mastercoin operation is uh, translates to a Bitcoin operation. So all the clients just parse this transaction and compute the state of the system. So I, I won't get into that, we can do some questions about that later. And in the back there. Uh, <coughs> yeah. So the question there was, who physically decides in the contracts for differences, who physically decides what, what, uh, how, should, how the funds should be split, basically, right? So everybody decides, I mean, or everybody validates the decision. There is a public information feed that, ever, that E4 publishes or any company can publish, and, and everybody sees this feed on top of the blockchain, right? So in the blockchain, you have messages that say, the rate of gold is now five bitcoins, or uh, mastercoins. The rate of gold is now seven mastercoins. The rate of gold is now 10 mastercoins. So when, all the clients in the network parse the Mastercoin and Bitcoin transactions, they compute the state of the system, and they know what the division, what the correct division of the funds should be. Right? So there's no single decider, it's just everybody reaches the same consensus. Stocks and full exchange are trading milliseconds, and you will have to trade every 10 minutes. It's like going 2,000 years back, something. Yeah. So the question was, what about the time? There are, uh, there are album trades or uh, you know, uh, sub-millisecond trades going on in modern stock exchanges and forex exchanges. How can we compete with that? Or uh, We have a 10-minute 10, 10 clock on Bitcoin, right? Between every two Bitcoin blocks, on average, there is about 9 or 10 minutes difference. So the answer is, first of all, we're not necessarily very concerned with doing high, super high frequency trades, certainly not in the moment. I mean, it's one, one feature, but it's not the only feature of, of stock exchanges and, and forex exchanges, and we might get to it later. Uh, as I said before, our backend, the Bitcoin blockchain, the Bitcoin system, is our current backend, but we can sub swap it later, if we want, for something else. But it's not a priority with us to just allow these kinds of trades. We want to allow people to just buy assets and hold them. It's not, I'm not sure it's a very uh, mandatory or, or high priority feature. I wonder, um, unlike uh, Bitcoin where you have uh, miners that uh, the side things can change the protocol, protocol. how does, how does uh, Put aside for Mastercoin. Yeah, so that's an excellent question. I'll, I'll get to it soon. Okay, I think we can continue. All right. All right. All right. So we, we discussed the distributed exchange. We we showed how we can implement uh, various assets on top of this exchange. 
Now I want to tell you about the small property feature of MasterCoin. It's modeled after a similar feature in Bitcoin. Right? Bitcoin also has small property. The analogy may, may not be perfect at times, but this is the term we're using right now. Uh, we have Bob again. You're all familiar with Bob now. You're a good friend. Bob wants to build a new, uh, a new startup. Right? He has an idea for this uber sophisticated uh, betting platform. And he just he has the, the best idea in the world. He just needs money to implement it. Right? He wants to hire coders and lawyers and, and a PR firm. He has expenses. So, but Bob doesn't have any money. Right? So what does Bob do? He sells shares of his idea uh, in Bitcoin. Right? This is something that's already going on. And you can, uh, I won't get into the technical, uh, you know, he can either sell shares of ownership in his company, or he can sell uh, participation in future profits. There are lots of different things that Bob can do here. But just for example, for, for this example, let's stick with shares. So Bob, go, Bob goes to a centralized Bitcoin stock exchange, right? And this is not, this is not an exchange like Mt. Gox or Bitstamp. Uh, these exchanges, but Mt. Gox and Bitstamp and other most of the Bitcoin exchanges are places where you can trade various types of fiat money, right? US dollars or shekels or, or uh, yen with Bitcoin. And you can even trade Bitcoin with other cryptocurrencies. You can trade Bitcoin with Litecoin and, and other things. But the type of exchange I'm, I'm talking about here is a, a proper stock exchange, right? Bob can come to this exchange, issue, create out of thin air stock, stocks in his company, right? His company is Satoshi Dice, so he just created four Satoshi Dice tokens. Now Alice sees Bob's idea, right? Bob wrote, wrote a brilliant business plan, and then Alice believes that Bob's idea is the winner. Right? She wants to send him some money so he can build his idea. Uh, so what Alice does is she sends this Bitcoin to the centralized uh, stock exchange. She buys one of the Satoshi Dice uh, stocks, and now the exchange lists on her account that she owns a stock, right? And this exchange is just a normal computer, a normal server out there on the internet. It's uh, operated by someone, whether it's a person or an entity or a company. And uh, Bob can now withdraw the bitcoins that Alice deposited, and he can use this money to stock his service. So. This is all good and well, but the reality isn't so pretty, right? Uh, there, was, there were questions before about regulation. This is even maybe more risky on a regu regulatory standpoint. There have been three uh, more actually uh, stock exchanges in the Bitcoin ecosystem, some of them dating back almost two years ago, uh, and then some of them newer. Uh, and a lot of them have started closing down, first shutting down to US customers, then shutting down completely, because this kind of business, running this kind of business is risky, and it's problematic, and it's regulated. And there are still, I think, a few exchanges that are operating, but nothing that has been sanctioned by any country or jurisdiction. So, so Bob has no real secure way of doing this. So what we're doing in MasterCoin, our decentralized version of this, is just let any MasterCoin user, and you don't even have to own MasterCoins to use this feature. You can just download the client. But anyone who uses the, the MasterCoin client can just create tokens that represent ownership or shares or profit sharing in his company. And he'll have, the, he'll have, I won't get into how it's done technically, but he'll have a very easy button on his desktop client that says create shares, right? And, and then he will describe what the shares are about, and who, who is behind these shares, and then what's, what is basically the contract that he's entering with his users. Now notice, it is, is, this, is, this person is entering into a contract with his users by, by issuing these shares. It's not MasterCoin that is, Master, MasterCoin is not a party to this contract. We're just a technical platform. So we, we achieve the same thing that these, these websites, these centralized websites try to achieve without centralization. Uh, and of course, the issuer, both the issuer and the investor has to do the proper regulatory checks. Any question about this?
about uh, withdrawing money or withdrawing bitcoins? Uh, this, this operation? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, from what I know, the tax authorities are waiting there. Fine. Okay, so what we gain from the bitcoin? I mean, bitcoin doesn't know about any laws in any state. Bitcoin and Mastercoin doesn't know the laws. It's the person's obligation to, to know and to follow the proper laws. Because you counted few risks that are along the way, and I just try to see what's the balance. I mean, where do I get the benefit that covers for those risks? Yeah, I mean, okay, I, I, I'll repeat the question uh, for those in the webinar. So, what, how does, what are the concrete benefits of using MasterCoin if you always need to, to check with the regulators and the tax authorities? And that's always, the, there, are, there are a lot of jurisdictions in the world. And some of them might be less regulated, some of them are more regulated. If you happen to live in a less regulated environment, you can, you can create these tokens easily. And, and the alternative, the alternative, the only alternative you have today is to either go person by person to investors and try to solicit, to listen, solicit them and get them to invest in your company. You don't have a real alternative. Companies don't usually uh, IPO on the NASDAQ uh, stock exchange when they don't have any money, right? It's only huge companies that can afford the IPO process. Crowdsourcing is another alternative, could be. Yeah, okay. So uh, if I measure it compared to crowdsourcing, what, what are the, the money benefits? I mean, so the question was, how does it compare to crowdsourcing? But I'm not sure that these are quite comparable, and I want to move on. Maybe we can talk about this later. All right. Any more questions? Or we'll then back. Yeah, what, what prevents me from, uh, what prevents me from uh, uh, writing my own uh, wallet and, uh, and distributing it uh, to people or uh, some new feature without uh, consulting with anyone? Yeah, so what prevents you from writing your own wallet software, right, and then just distributing it, distributing it? So nothing, right? It's completely open source, there's no central point. However, in order for your wallet and your software to be interoperable, to work with all the other, uh, that's the other clients, the other MasterCoin clients that exist, you need to coordinate with them, right? Otherwise, they won't recognize anything you do on, on your wallet. So there is a specification, and for everything to work correctly, you have to follow this specification. And I will work soon. I will go to soon. I will cover soon. Sorry, how this specification evolved. All right. And, uh, How do I buy the mastercoins? Yeah. So about <laughs> buying mastercoins, soon we will have the distributed exchange. Okay. And this is the, the wet dream of, of Bitcoin for a long time, right? You have you can buy bitcoins or you have bitcoins. And uh, you will be able to just download a client, send your bitcoins out to the cloud, right, to the blockchain, to hook the best bid, and just buy through that. That's not quite ready yet. It will be a few months, maybe two months until it's complete. Right now, there are two, uh, two places that I know of where you can buy mastercoins. First, there is a Google spreadsheet, right? You can find it on our website. There is a Google spreadsheet that anyone who wishes to buy or sell then can just list on that spreadsheet, you can find sellers or buyers there and coordinate with them. This is one option. The second one is uh, you can use a centralized website. Uh, there is one where called the buymastercoin.com. The owner is here in the crowd. You can find him later. Uh, but you basically you send you send bitcoins to this website and he gets you the best deal he can on your mastercoin. That's the options that are available right now. Okay, uh, let's continue. So I want to discuss uh, decentralized applications a bit. So uh, I don't know if you remember even our mission statement. Uh, we get, well, I'll repeat it uh, soon. But what I describe right now is a lot of financial instruments, right? How to do all these different types of uh, transactions, how to hold these assets, how to ideal. Where, that, that's, where does that uh, come into play uh, in our mission? So uh, let's, see, let's see how we're doing, how we're just decentralizing ourselves. So about the specification, right? There is a white paper 
the version 1.0 of this white paper was released by Willett. He also released a, a second version of it a month later, but he was always the source of truth regarding this white paper. Right? He was the authority. Now, uh, to, to remove this central point of failure, or this point of centralization, what we did as a first step is just upload the white paper to GitHub, GitHub which is a, uh, an open source, uh, it's a website that uh, everybody can use to build open source projects. And the spec, the specification is all over there. Uh, and everybody can send pull, pull requests. Okay, they can send in suggestions on specific parts of the protocol, how to change or fix or add new features. That's open for everybody to send these kinds of requests. And uh, right now, JR Willett is still the, the spec master, okay? He's owner of the spec, and he goes over these pull requests, these suggestions, and approves or denies them. Of course, with community, with consulting with the community. The next chain, the next step, one of the features that we're planning is to have the spec changes voted on by the community. Okay, so we want not will it, or not ask the foundation to decide on how this protocol evolves, but we want all the community, all the holders of MasterCoins, to decide how, what MasterCoin is and how it evolves. Uh, so people who own MasterCoin will have a voting option in their clients, and, and they will see all sorts of, of requests to change the protocol, and then they can say, I approve this request, I deny, it, I, I reject this request. And once we have a majority of, of MasterCoin holders, a, a pull request will get into the protocol and will become official. So we're removing ourselves, our decision process, decision making process from the equation. Another point of centralization that we currently have is the funds. Right? I mentioned that we raised quite a bit of money back in August. And first it was Willett himself that held these funds. Now, as an intermediate step, he is distributing these funds among members of the Masterplan Foundation board, right? And then the board is deciding how the expenses are going to be made. And the next step, or the ultimate step, is to just give the funds to the community, right? There will be a pool of money in Bitcoins and Masterplans that we don't manage. So the community can vote on how these funds are spent and used for the development and improvement of master bonds. So this can be in all various types of, of expenses, right? You have small expenses, like $100 to, to change something in the spec, or you have large expenses, like, uh, I don't know, the, the 300 Bitcoin contest that Willet is doing right now. So all these range of expenses can be decided on by community vote. And the vote is, is not really democratic, we're not counting people here, but we're count, counting MasterCoin owners. And each owner has a proportional vote compared to um, how many MasterCoins they own. Okay, so before I, I talked about smart property and how someone can issue stocks for a centralized company, right? This Bob has the idea for Satoshi Dice. He registers, he checks the regulatory environment, he set up the server. It's a normal company, right? He can use MasterCoin to IPO if that is in accordance to the laws in his uh, country. But uh, as, as we've seen, MasterCoin is a sort of decentralized company or decentralized application. The word company has some legal baggage, so it doesn't really fit here. But MasterCoin is sort of a decentralized protocol or application that can evolve itself. So we have MasterCoin tokens. Right, that anybody can buy for, for the market price. Tokens are needed to use the app. Right? Mastercoins are needed to use Mastercoin. Not necessarily all the features of Mastercoin. There might be some features that, uh, that don't require Mastercoins, but for a lot of features, you will need to own Mastercoins in order to use the protocol. So, so tokens are needed for this app. The token increase in value if the app is useful. We had we have a certain amount of master coins that were issued. There, were, there, were, there, were, there are about 600,000 master coins, and there won't be any more. And master coins are, by the way, divisible, just like bitcoins. You can own one million for master coin if you wanted to. 
but you have a set amount, a finite amount of tokens. Uh, so if there, since there is a limited supply, and if the demand will increase, the value of the tokens will increase with it. So the more useful the application is, the higher its tokens are in value. And uh, by following the procedures that I just described in the previous slide, owners of these tokens can vote. They can say how they want the application to behave. They, they can change the specification. They can allocate funds. They effectively manage this application. Right? It's, it's sort of anal analogous to a, a traditional company that has shareholders that can vote on certain decisions, but it is not a company, not in any known legal regulated sense of the world. Right? It's something new. Just like Bitcoin doesn't really fall into any of the old criteria, right? Is it a currency? Is it a commodity? Nobody knows. Okay, so we, we understood that we are a decentralized application, and just like we allow anyone to issue stocks on their centralized application, we also allow people to, to create new applications also on top of us, right? If you have a, an idea for a social network, right? You have uh, Facebook, which is completely centralized. There is a company, Facebook Inc., and it has uh, shareholders, and it's regulated by US law, and, and it has servers, right? There has been attempts to do a decentralized Facebook. There has been a company called Diaspora. They tried, tried to do the same thing in an open source way. They failed, I think mostly because they didn't have the proper monetization model. But using Mastercoin, you can create something like that and, and just build in the monetization model into your application. So you will have these social tokens, right? You can issue these over whatever period of time you decide. And whoever owns these social tokens will be able to use your social network. And, and the shareholder, the people holding these social tokens, can, can choose how to spend the funds that you raise to, to develop the cost and Basically, you can just do whatever we did with Mexico, you can do it for your applications, whatever you want. There are people already uh, doing stuff about uh, identity management and DNS and communication platforms and I, I think that there is a new wave of autonomous or decentralized application that is coming, right? And we, our purpose is to be the infrastructure that allows this, this new plethora of, of applications to exist and to operate. How is the transition between applications? How the communication between different applications? So we don't, all right, the question was how, how do the various applications written on top of master coins how do they interact with each other? So we haven't, we're not there yet, right? This is just mostly ideas. We're just uh, trying to explain ourselves right now and just share this information and want to gather as large a as group of people we can to just help build these sort of applications and tell us what they mean. One thing that is obvious and that we know already about the interoperability between these applications is that you will have financial interoperability. Right? If you have social tokens and I have name tokens, then you can, I can post bids and you can match them and you can trade all these tokens with one another. Right? There might be more ways to do this, this communication between various applications, but we just need a few more months to, to brainstorm on these ideas. Uh, okay, so we have a lot of more Mastercoin features that we're thinking of and, and implementing. Uh, I won't get into all of them right now. We have betting features. You can just do a bet whether Bitcoin reaches ten thousand dollars within in uh, 2014, right? And if you want, if you want this bet, you get some money, and if you don't, you don't get anything. And you can do options. You can do leveraging all sorts of financial instruments. Uh, you can bet on sports games. Right? For example, if you have a company that organizes sport, sports game, they can broadcast into the blockchain the results of these sport games, right? who, who, which team won and what was the, the result of the match. And then everybody can just bet on these results. You can bet on block hashes, just like Satoshi does, Satoshi does that, in a completely decentralized manner. Uh, you can do prediction markets, which is an enhancement of this idea. Let's say I went into, I, I did a bet with someone, right? And I, 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 well, it doesn't really even matter what the bet is, but I bet on some event. 
Now, this bet is actually a financial asset, and I can offer this bet up for trade. And if, if I'm not happy with the, the, if I don't want to keep this bet, I can sell it for 50 master ones, or whatever I want. So it's derivatives on top of derivatives. I know it's a bit complicated, but it's an ecosystem that's evolved. Just one second, I'll finish the slide. Uh, we can copy trades, right? This is, uh, I think there are a few people from eToro here today. This is something that were inspired by eToro. eToro is, e is a forex company that I think their, their main uh, feature is copy trades, right? If, if I recognize a good trader, right? Uh, I, know that, I know that this guy is an excellent trader and he can predict where Bitcoin prices go, up or down, he has this crystal ball and he just knows how to do it. And I don't, I don't know it because I'm, I'm busy with Mastercoin, right? So I don't have the time to track Bitcoin now. So I, I'm just saying I, I can copy whatever trades that he does in a decentralized manner. I can just send a, a command to the blockchain that tells the blockchain, whatever this guy does, I want my funds to act in the same way, right? And, and so I can just copy whatever thing he does, and if he's successful, then I'll make the profits as well. And portfolio diversification. My previous startup, I was working on it this summer, was called BitBlue, uh, without me. Uh, and BitBlue was trying to do an investment platform that allows anyone to diversify their holdings. Now, as we know today, there are a lot of different cryptocurrencies. We have Bitcoin, we have Litecoin, Namecoin, Mastercoin, Ripple. It's confusing. If uh, if you want, if you just believe in, your, in the idea of cryptocurrencies, of decentralized digital currencies, and you want to invest in that idea, but you don't know which of the cryptocurrencies is the good bet, you can invest in a diversified asset. Like, if you invest in the stock market, you don't pick one stock, right? You can, you can invest in the S&P 500 or different indexes that automatically include the best stocks. So this kind of idea we can also implement in a decentralized way. I won't get into that now. Let's take a question from the back. So my question is, uh, what is the incentive of someone to post uh, a news feed for a feed? Right. So what is the incentive to post the news feed? That's an excellent question. Uh, I don't have a specific answer for the incentive. It can be just you want to position yourself as the lead uh, the lead price uh, information provider. Uh, it can be other reasons, but the thing is, there isn't a lot of of liability, and, and you're not risking a lot by doing by publishing this feed. It's information you already have, and you're not getting any funds from anyone. You're not securing anything. You're just posting, just like you post the same feed on your website. You can post it on the blockchain. And then if, like, if eToro, for example, that doesn't want to do it, somebody else can just copy whatever prices they see on, on all the different exchanges and post this information to the blockchain. So you don't need cooperation for anyone. You can just do it. Third parties can come up to do this themselves.
from value and uh, changing transactions uh, in a way that, that I, it's a bit technical, I won't get to, into how it's done, but we are working with the developers, we're trying to find the, the best way for this cooperation to happen. And, and, and you know, I just posted the week, a week ago to the, I sent an email to the Bitcoin developers and I told them, yeah, guys, I think we might have a serious scalability issue in a few months if this takes off. And I want to work with you to find the best way to circumvent that. Now, the thing is, Bitcoin is a protocol, it's neutral. Just like Satoshi Dice came and, and overloaded the network and there were people who loved that idea and people who hated that idea. The same with Mastercoin, there will be people who are against it and, and people who support it, uh, but Bitcoin itself doesn't care. Now, the question is what miners will do and will they include our transactions or will they try to block us? And there are ongoing discussions about that. Uh, if, if the worst happens, if the worst come to, comes to worst, and we can't use the existing infrastructure, we'll just fork away, we'll just swap our backend and, and maybe launch an alt, an alt currency. Okay, but it's, it's an, an area of hot discussion and, and research. So we'll have better answers in a few months. More questions? Uh, why did you implement all those features of, of Bitcoin rather than... Uh... We are implementing them. Well, the question was, was why, why not implement the, the features on Bitcoin? This is, uh, this is the way that J.R. Williams found to implement the features on Bitcoin. It, it, there might be other ways out there to do it in a different manner, but you know, I, I'm not, we're not responsible to all the different types of things that you can do. We found this to be the quickest way to do this. Okay, let's continue. I think we're near the end. So again, I repeat our mission statement. We want to accelerate innovation throughout the world by building a global value exchange platform in an open, centralized, transparent way. So, accelerate innovation. You saw some examples of how anyone in the world with any idea can come, raise money on top of this platform, and it can be for a for-profit en uh, endeavor, right? You can try to make money off of whatever idea you want. You can raise money just for a non-profit, right? You can, you can do... A, a, one of these uh, decentralized applications with the, with the goal of, uh, for example, saving the environment. Right? You can do a Kickstarter on top of Mastercoin and then just the, all the funds that are raised in this Kickstarter will be dedicated to some non-profit uh, goal or another. You, you have all this, we're just enabling the platform, we're just building the platform that allows people to get money to fund their ideas. And we're not, we're not trying to judge or, or prioritize which ideas are the best. We're just building the platform. Uh, the means we're doing it is by this value exchange platform uh, and we're just building all the necessary features that are required to be efficient and competitive uh, with the real world. And, and the last sentence, in an open, decentralized and transparent way, I showed you how uh, we're decentralizing ourselves. We're removing all power uh, from the Mastercoin foundations. It's a gradual process. It will take some time maybe a year, maybe more. But uh, sooner, uh, than, rather sooner than later, I want the Mastercon Foundation to just be an information aggregate, to be a point of contact, but to not have any control over the funds or the protocol. And uh, we're completely open. You can, uh, we're posting everything online. We have a trail board that's out and, and everybody can look at everything that we're doing and they can pick tasks and then they, they can suggest new ideas and new bounties. Uh, everything is out there. So, a small comparison of Mastercoin and Bitcoin. Okay? Mastercoin to Bitcoin is sort of like a Forex or Nasdaq to, to uh, US dollars. Right? It's, it's a, a value exchange platform where Bitcoin is a currency. Mastercoin is like HTTP to TCP IP. And I know that I lost everybody, everyone who's not a programmer, but the internet is built with a layer system, right? You have bottom layers and upper layers, and each layer just takes the bottom layers and adds new functionality. So we have the Bitcoin layer to provide security and the, the time synchronization. We have the Mastercoin layer for the applications and value exchange. And we don't know yet what kind of applications will be built on top of Mastercoin. But we want to, to enable everybody to do whatever they want. Uh, and we're cooperating with Bitcoin and competing with Bitcoin, right? We're cooperating, we're trying our best 
to, to move forward, but not to harm Bitcoin. And whenever there is a, a useful suggestion, a product or suggestion of how to, to implement or how to, how to do our stuff in a way that is harmless to Bitcoin, Bitcoin, we're the first one to adopt it. Uh, but of course, it's a competition also in a financial sense, right? Because you, you have uh, Bitcoin holders and you have Mastercoin holders, and these are two different assets. So we naturally, our, our mission is also to increase the value of Mastercoin, right? We're doing the best we can for our users. So uh, we want people to invest in Mastercoins, and they usually, it's either Bitcoin or Mastercoin or some mixture of the two. So it's a sort of friendly competition. We love what Bitcoin is doing. We're just trying to increase the usefulness. And uh, this icon here, uh, we're recently in the last month become a member, a silver me member of the Bitcoin Foundation. So we were paying them, we're sponsoring, we want to work with them to improve everything. All right, uh, a bit about the status right now, just to sum up. The decentralized exchange is running, is operational right now, but only if you're a coder, right? Only if you know what you're doing and you know how to, to use Linux, and you can download the software and then make sure not to make any mistakes. For Windows users, uh, I don't know, even maybe for Mac users, I'm not a Mac user, but uh, it's still a bit hard to use it. Uh, this is supposed to improve within six to eight weeks. We set the high usability bar on the, on the desktop clients that we want to achieve before we are awarding these 300 big points to the developers. Uh, the contracts for differences that I mentioned before, and uh, the spec for that the specification is ready. This is in already in the latest spec. We, we haven't done any implementation of that yet because we're focused on the decentralized exchange. And uh, Vitalik Buterin from the Bitcoin Magazine uh, wrote that spec, I think, and, and he's working on more advanced uh, versions of the spec that will allow generalized CFDs and scripting. I won't get into that. Uh, smart property. Now, smart property and, and this type of issuing of tokens is a core Mastercoin feature, and, and, and we want to put a lot of emphasis on that. So, we recently recruited Tariq uh, Lewis as the feature lead for this uh, feature. Uh, he's also building his own company or his own idea, and we use Mastercoin for that. But his job is also to go out to the community to reach all the developers out there, uh, all the companies out there that want to use uh, something like that, and to explain to them why Mastercoin is a useful platform for them. And it's, he also manage the, the development of the feature. Uh, regarding PR, we hired the PR company called Social Radius. Uh, they have some, they, we have some stuff uh, cooking. We have a few explainer videos that are being worked on. We have, uh, we have some PR in major uh, technical blogs and others that we're doing. Uh, our main goal right now is to get a lot of attention, to get uh, developers to come and look at all the different things we're doing and pick whatever tasks they want to work on. Uh, so I told you we had about, uh, what was it, uh, $600,000 $600, at August. So now we have $8 million US dollars. Uh, the, the value of Bitcoin increased, the value of Mastercoin increased, and, and this foundation, the Mastercoin Foundation, owns a certain amount of Mastercoins, and now we have a lot of money. And we're trying to use that money to, to develop the protocol as quickly as, as we can. So if you have a suggestion on how we can give you money in exchange for some why? achievement that you do... Why? Why? On, on why you should uh, give... No, I mean, if, if there's someone with a concrete, uh, detailed suggestion on, on something that they want to build on top of the Mastercoin ecosystem to improve Mastercoin, to build, bring more value, you can approach us with a plan and we can consider it and we, we can sponsor you to, to do this, right, and to benefit everyone. And the market cap of Mastercoin is a third of that of Litecoin. Right, it's, it's quite amazing. We're already past all the other alt currencies. Uh, Litecoin is still uh, above us, and, and Ripple are also above us, and Bitcoin, of course. But they were already rich, amazing state in, in just a few months. This is how you can get involved if you're interested. Uh, you can just watch or uh, just read all, all everything we have on Trello. Uh, we have lots of tickets there. Just pick whichever one you want, and uh, and you know there are some of the tickets 
already have existing bounties on them, and uh, some of them don't have yet a specific amount of money attached to them, but you can always come to a ticket and say, all right, yeah, I, I want this amount of money to work on that, or you can see a certain bounty, but, but you can tell us, this is not enough for me, I want more, but, but this is how I'm going to deliver this feature, and just engage with us. We're open to a discussion on everything. Uh, this is how you can get status update, updates on what's going on, right? We have a blog, and uh, we are posting weekly updates there on what's going on. Uh, there are Facebook groups, and, and, and we're discussing building a forum. There are lots of channels going on. There is a Google Plus page. We have five international chapters. Okay, Israel is, I think, that the first chapter. There is Master in Israel, and uh, that is now forming. And, and we also have chapters in China, in the UK, in New York, in Greece, and then you know, there, are, there are a lot of people who are asking us all the time, how, we can, how we, can I get involved? I'm not a coder, I'm not a business guy, what can I do? So if you have time, if you have free time and you want to have, this is an excellent way. You can just stop your own chapter. I, I, I wrote today the wiki entry on how to do that. Uh, and it's completely, uh, it's completely loose, right? You can do whatever fits your description or your, your thinking of how to set up a chapter. We can advise on what we think is best, but, but you decide. Uh, and finally, you know, drop us a line, contact us, info at Mastercoin. We're always listening. Uh, regarding Mastercoin Israel, and as I said, that this meeting is taking place as part of Mastercoin Israel, uh, we're doing the founding meeting for this organization next week, on Tuesday. Uh, we're doing it at the brand new Bitcoin Embassy that we're opening. I don't, I don't know if I was supposed to say it on mic or not, but we're, uh, some people here are opening a Bitcoin Embassy uh, here in Tel Aviv, and it's just a place that, to conduct some meetings about Bitcoin that you just come and visit. So we're using that place to, to the founding meeting of Mastercoin Israel. Anybody who wants to get involved, just come to that meeting. Uh, these are the guys that are currently most active in Mastercoin Israel. And I want to take to thank every one of them, Jonathan Klinger, for providing legal advice, and Stas, and Offer Rotem, and Anon, especially for organizing this meetup, because this exploded really quickly. We, we were supposed to be 10 people in this room. Right, or in another room, and then suddenly we're a lot more. And they, they did all the production, the webinar, and without you guys, this wouldn't have happened. Any more questions? Yes, um, as, a, as an investor, you like to know that your, uh, your, uh, your master coin is, is going to go up more. Um, now, Picasso, he, 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 he produced uh, several paintings, and then he died. So you know the paintings will go up in the right. value. The question is, how do you know that the, um, the goalposts won't change with MasterCard and you won't increase the uh, number of, uh, sorry, MasterCoin and uh, increase the uh, number of tokens? Or, or yeah, so I will repeat the question. From an investor's point of view, how does an investor know that it, we won't increase the number of MasterCoins in existence, right? So the answer to that is just like in Bitcoin. Right, in Bitcoin, you have a social contract between everybody working on Bitcoin that there are no more than 21 million Bitcoins. And the same can be said about Mastercoin. There is a finite number of Mastercoins, and there's no reason to issue more. So I don't think that How no, no, ma no more Mastercoins will be issued. There's no point in that. We can just always divide them to smaller and smaller chunks. Think of Mastercoins as 100% ownership. So the number of Mastercoins that exist are the 100%. And you can buy 1% of that or how much, however you want. How many are there? There are about 600,000 right now. Oh, I have <laughs> <laughs> Back there. That, that's a finite number, actually. It's, uh, it's 600,000, uh, uh, something, and uh, d uh, with, with eight digits filled. It's actually a very precise and fina finite uh, number. Yeah. Thank you. So I have two questions which relate to comparing this to Ripple. Uh, the first one is related to the funding. That is, Ripple said up front that they are putting some XLPs for, for them as a, uh, as, as a whatever will, will get their value for as a country. Right? Right. So on that matter, how are the, the muscle coins divided? 
And what are your policy in terms of uh, going forward? Are you saying specifically that you are out of that 600,000, you are keeping 100 as a base, or what, what is the policy? Yeah, okay, so I'll repeat the question. The question was, how are our master coins going to be divided if we compare it to Ripple? R Ripple, if you don't know, R Ripple issued 1 billion Ripples, and they just said we're keeping half of them and we're giving some to these founders and some for the company, and this is essentially part of their business model. Right? They, they are a for-profit company. We are a non-profit company, and our goal is a bit different. Uh, the individual people who own master coins, everybody owns whatever amount of master coins they, they want. I mean, we don't know how many master coins each person owns, except for Willet. Willet uh, Willet wrote on the on the Bitcoin talk forums that he invested 100% of his Bitcoins or 99% of his Bitcoins into Mastercoin, and that was I don't remember the amount. It was about uh, 1,200, 1,200, 1,200 Bitcoins, right? And all of that he converted into Mastercoin, and now he owns a huge chunk of Mastercoin, and it's up to him when he decides to sell that or not. But it's his personal shares, right, or the tokens. Uh, the foundation owns a certain amount of master coin, right? 10% or 9% of all master coins are owned by the foundation. But our point, our purpose is not to keep them. And we're not, we're not, the, 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 there are no owners to the master coin foundation. We want to use this money to distribute it, to, to build the protocol. And we're going to do that. And, and the, there is some post that David Johnston, one of our, one of our board members, is writing. On, on the release schedule of these master coins. But it's it's not going out to, it's not contributions, we're, uh, we're not, uh, it's not donations, we're not handing them out just for nothing. We're using this money for, for a good purpose for every master coin holder, right? So it's, it's not uh, not quite identical to what Ripple are doing. Ripple are, are giving away some money because this is basically the only thing that they can do, right? They, they <coughs> invented Ripple and they have all the ripples from the beginning. And the MasterCoin Foundation only owns about 9% of all MasterCoins. And then we're also trying to get rid of that. Okay, more questions? Only nine? You said, just said 1,200 plus a bunch that you have. That's uh, already over 20%. What? Sorry, no, I'm not talking about Willits. Sorry. I'm not talking about Willits' personal holdings or our personal holdings. I'm talking about how many master coins the master coin foundation, the debt organization, owns? And, and that organization owns about 9% of. Is part of it? Will it's part, it's part of it, but it's an in, in individual. Will, will it's part is ah. roughly 30%, so slightly lower right now, yeah. about 27, 28%. Yeah, I'm expecting he will sell yeah, some, some, but it's up to him. Some of his own plus some of his of the foundation. No, he doesn't no. have some of the foundation. He's a custodian for, the, for some of the foundation, right? But it's not, it's not his money. He has his personal money and then the foundation money. It's, these are completely different piles of money. You said that uh, you're giving it away. Um, uh, is Will giving some pays away? And don't you think that uh, the big problem with the idea is that somebody owns so many of them and can sort of control the market? Okay. So the question, the question was, uh, is Will giving away free master coins from his personal <laughs> stash, <laughs> basically? And is it the problem that Willits own, owns so much? So I don't think that Willits is willing to give any of that away. He believes that the value is going to go up. And as a free player in the, in the you know, capitalist environment that the world is, he is entitled to do his own financial decisions. He will decide when he wants to sell and at which rate, and that's completely up to him. Now, is it a problem that so much power is concentrated into one, in the hands of one person? Yes, it's a temporary problem. At some point, Willet owned maybe 90% of all master coins. And, and then at some point, we cross the threshold where he owns less than 50%. A lot more people kick in. And then at some point in the future, I, ima I imagine that he will either sell some of his master coins or donate them or do whatever he wants with them. If the market thinks that it's a problem that Willet or anyone else owns too many master coins, then the, master, uh, the value of master coins will go down and master coins won't succeed. But then to counter that, 
we live can just set a bunch of, a bunch of master points and the market can then react and increase again. So I'm not predicting how the market is going to behave, but the problem is not inherent, it's temporary. And compare that, by the way, to the founders of any company, right? You have founders of companies who are own 90%, 50%, 30%, 10% of their companies, right? Will it, is, will it, ha will it happen to own 30% of maximum? And that's okay. And if he wants to change that amount, either buy more or sell, that's his choice. So the value currently is between $30 and $40 a unit? Is that the nice I'm not even thinking, the, the question was about the value of uh, master coins in dollars. I'm not even thinking about, about dollars anymore, it's the pace value. I, I, I know that they're about 0 0.3 and 0 0.45 uh, bitcoins. You said there's approximately 600,000. 600, yeah, there are approximately 600,000. The cap's about $8 million currently. Yeah, that's so according to my latest calculation. The calculation is about 2 million. Sure. Back there in the back. I can't tell you, can you get the mic? We were saying that uh, in about uh, six, months, six to eight weeks, uh, there's going to be a client allowing you to perform some of the features described. Right. Which ones? Are there any time frames for the different features? Yeah, okay. So the question was about our time frame, about the ETAs, which features are coming out where. Right in this project, I think it's maybe unlike any other project that I know of. Right? The, the, it's, we don't have a, a roadmap that we break down to tasks. We're just telling the world what we want done, and then depending on how many people we can gather and how much funding we allocate, we can get things done. So the time frame of six to eight weeks, that's just an estimate, and then some of us know how software projects work and how, how uh, reliable our estimates in this case. But this is our best estimate for when the decentralized exchange between Bitcoin and MasterCoin will be live including a usable client in a few operating system, I think Windows is one of them. So, so this is the current estimate for that. I'm, as executive director, I'm trying to accelerate development on all fronts. As I said, we have lots of money and I think not enough de developers, and we want to hire more either in, in various types of positions, right? We can hire someone on an hourly basis, on a project basis, or on a bounty basis, where he just completes the bounty and gets paid. So we want to accelerate this development and then do all the, the stuff that I just uh, described. But uh, we don't have any, any estimates on, on when they're coming. I imagine that all of them will be done within a year or maybe even half a year. It depends how, how good we do our jobs. All right. Is there a plan to create an implementation that would allow um, holders of MasterCoin to vote regarding some of the features that are wanted? Yeah, so the question was, is there a plan to implement voting about features or about fund distribution? So yeah, I, I just described that in the presentation, that it, there is a request out there, there is a card on our trail board that says, please write a spec for that. Right, and anybody here can come and write the spec and get some bounty. And after that is done, when we have the specification for how the feature behaves, we can then offer a bounty for its implementation. This is how this thing developed. So yeah, we want to do that as, as quickly as possible. Any more questions? Regarding MasterCoin as a currency, how soon will tracking the quantity of MasterCoins one owns and uh, trading master coins would be as simple as it is li right now and with this. <laughs> yeah, so the question is how soon can you track the number of master coins and, the value. and, and their value and, uh, and transact with them, just like you're doing the basically the basic operations, right? So that's ongoing right now, uh, and uh, as I said, I think within this, this period of six to eight months, it's not just a decentralized exchange that's coming up, it's also clients that do just that. And we have a website with a price chart that is being developed and, and all this stuff just falling into place. So bear with us for a few more months.
there, there is an ongoing price discovery process that is uh, forming right now in an order book that is handled in the in the uh, spreadsheet. But once we have clients that implement the bids and ask, uh, the price discovery will be much more efficient and prices would be stabilized. And right now you can uh, actually check for an address and know exactly how much the coins you own in that Bitcoin address. Yeah, there are a few websites today that you can just enter any Bitcoin address. As I said, Mastercoin addresses are Bitcoin addresses, it's the same thing. So you can take any Mastercoin address, input into that website, and you can see your balance. There are master chest and master coin info, info and, and I don't remember Master Coin Explorer. Explorer, Explorer. Explorer and, and just you can, you can access all of these via mastercoin.org. Okay, so I think if we don't have any more questions, oh, one last one. Yeah, I, I hope it's quick answer. So I'm a little bit confused about what, what is the difference between doing a standard Bitcoin transaction and then doing a Bitcoin, Bitcoin transaction within Mastercoin? Because, and, and my mental gap is that if you're doing a Bitcoin transaction with Bitcoins and you're actually sending one Bitcoin from one address to the next, but if you're doing it on top of Mastercoin, then you're sending this, you know, uh, very very small Bitcoin payment to a fake address. Right. So how is that? That's so I'll just touch, touch on that very quickly. Uh, the question was, what's the difference between doing a Bitcoin transaction on the Bitcoin network and doing a Bitcoin or Mastercoin transaction on the Mastercoin network? So to send Bitcoins, it's the same thing. You can, you, there's no separate way of sending Bitcoins, right? You send Bitcoins in the same way. To send Mastercoin, there is a specific encoding, and, and I really won't get into that now, but you just send a tiny amount of Bitcoins that just encodes the data that your transaction uh, has. And this is just a way of, of keeping that and then just telling the world, this private key authorizes this amount, this transfer of, of these and that, master coins or gold coins or whatever. So that's technical, you can, you can look at the details later. I think this is a wrap. Uh, thank you all for attending. I'm still here.